But for our audience, who is a broad audience, I'd like to give you a quick context. Uh, the Cassini Initiative is for new space, uh, meaning startups who are addressing new opportunities, new business concepts within the space industry, which often have links to other industries. Um, and they have some challenges and the European Commission has found a strategy and has initiated the Cassini Initiative to support these entrepreneurs. And uh, Thomas, I'll give you short to the floor on further declaring on what's the goal with the Cassini Initiative and what are some of the aspects. Yeah, thanks very much, Peter. Uh, thank you for, for inviting me uh, and the European Commission to uh, to your event. So I understand that you're you're talking about uh, uh, innovation um, initiatives uh, in, in in different sectors and so on. So it might be interesting then to to think a little bit about what kind of objectives we have set for the European Union's um, space program and and how entrepreneurship is one integral uh, part of this. So, um, in fact, um, we we had already had some uh, some actions in the past to try to stimulate entrepreneurship, and as we entered the new seven year period um, in in 2021, uh, we have a, a number of new. So we've created a special director general that means uh, a department for for space uh, and uh, and the defense industries. Uh, we have a new seven-year budget. We have an updated version of the of the union's uh, space program regulation, and so on. And um, with this comes also, let's say, uh, um, a, a, a raising the ambition level for what we want to achieve with uh, with entrepreneurship in Europe. So what we want to modernize the uh, union space program and the flagship programs, meaning the Copernicus satellite imagery and the Galileo uh, positioning services. But we also want to make many more uh, space related companies successful so that they can they can find high revenue growth and and be on a uh, on a path to profitability. And uh, I'm sorry, Thomas, this is the notification that you can actually share your presentation here in the, the Google Meet uh, so that our uh, people can uh... Can yeah, exactly. Let, let me just see here that I have the right uh, view and I'll show you a few a few slides. OK, we have reading view and uh, I'll show you the window now. It's just a little bit fiddly uh, in this video application. There we go. There we are. Yes. Yeah. So um, looking at the at the industry as a whole, we think that uh, it, there will be a lot of economic growth in the space industry in the coming years. Um, mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that Europe is part of this uh, of this growth, and and that our companies can position themselves to be uh, competitive uh, on on the international level, but also to be uh, to be strong suppliers on the European scene. Now it's easier said than done to put together an, an innovation program that can deliver on these objectives here that I'm showing you. We want to see uh, companies develop new uh, products and services, uh, trying to, um, to find uh, ways to produce space technology with new functionality, lower costs, uh, to create new digital services, and then try to roll them out on, on various markets with rather different kinds of customers. Um, and we've made some attempts in the previous years, as I mentioned, and what we're trying to do now is to, to look at the whole market and try to identify more precisely where are the, where are the gaps that we need to fill. Because we know that there are a lot of um, innovation support organizations at the national level, at the regional level. Uh, you have ESA also uh, providing support and so on. So we began the exercise by thinking about, um, by thinking about investment. It seems like investment is a common problem for companies both producing space technology, but also digital applications using space data. So we're putting in place now a, um, uh, a Cassini investment fund with uh, uh, an investment capacity of 1 billion euros. And the intention is to try to attract more venture capital funds to become active investors in, in space companies in Europe. And with that, we should be able to see um, quite a lot more individual investment deals in these mm -hmm. companies in, in, in the years to come. We also did a, a pilot scheme in 2019, 2020, which showed that it was possible to find um, venture capital funds who were interested in, in raising a new fund and focusing on space investments. 
Um, so that, that's one part of it. And the other part is, of course, that we need to emphasize that companies need to go out on the markets with private customers and try to find new customers and generate revenue. They cannot remain reliant on uh, institutional customers, meaning, uh, for example, the European Union, ESA, the national uh, space agencies and so on. Uh, mm -hmm. The uh, public budgets will likely not increase a lot in the future. So uh, the way to commercial growth is to, uh, to find uh, private customers. And, uh, and this is the package that, that we have put together and we've secured funding for, for this then. Uh, so you can see the Cassini Seed and Growth Funding Facility, which is implemented under InvestEU with the EIF as an implementing partner. And we complement this with Cassini Matchmaking, which is meant to be a series of events with different themes and different uh, target groups where we can stimulate uh, both industrial partnering and, uh, and meetings with, with investors. So. Um, a lot more networking also um, between between countries, I think, should be beneficial for, for companies. Um, we, we will also create the Cassini Business Accelerator, which is intended mm -hmm. to focus on the growth stages of companies to help them find a, 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 you know, way, ways to scale up on, on, on existing markets and on new markets. Um, in addition to this, we'll have an in-orbit demonstration, meaning we provide, you know, subsidies and and, and slots so that companies can test uh, their equipment in, in space conditions, which is a, an important validation uh, in order to be able to sell it. So th these are some of the main points. And, and hopefully in, in a couple of years, we'll be able to see the uh, effects on, on companies that they, they will have a, a better success rate and uh, they will find more customers. So that, let's say in, in, in a nutshell, uh, we combine money with uh, more focus on uh, on private customers and revenue, and in addition, we'll try to update the um, the procurement principles because we know that the budget we have at our disposal for for various contracts is important for companies. Um, well, both the money, but also let's say the uh, uh, they get credibility if they have a contract with ESA or the or the European Commission. That, that also means that, that the companies can show that we have an anchor customer and, um, uh, and that you know, gives them possibilities to, uh, to, to sell to, to more customers. So for example, for Copernicus contributing missions, we are buying uh, data with very high resolution imagery and, and radar images. Uh, we will update the, the procurement there to stimulate more uh, Europe-based SMEs primarily to, to become supplier buyers and create more of a, of a level playing field so it's not about you know talking about procurement but we will really do it and uh, make sure that that uh, new entrants can get uh, long-term contracts to to supply data if they fulfill the quality criteria and we can meet the needs of the copernicus users which are primarily uh, public authorities Mm -hmm. So there, there we go. Uh, we have put together a package of, of different things. I'm sure it can be can be done differently in different uh, in different sectors and in different markets. Mm -hmm. uh, so what do you think, Peter? If you compare well, it to, um, to other. Um, it is um, very easy and, 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 and quick to talk uh, in 10 minutes about the whole strategy, but there, it's been, in, I think, two years that you've been working uh, on this already and and you see that there's there's a lot of growth um and so for me um from my, from our interest as as, as also provider of, of one of the services um i would dive into each each of the different aspects but thank you very much thomas on on giving the overview and connecting pretty much with with the, the main 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 points main principles behind the cassini yeah. initiative um i want yeah, to it. urge <laughs> do you, do so, do, do you have any any questions, or do you have any comparisons, perhaps with with other with other sectors where you've seen innovation uh, support initiatives? Yes. So, um, definitely, I wanted to touch on on, on that. In in, um, I'll revert the question first back to you. Um, our listeners are from many different industries. Um, mm -hmm. Are they able to directly uh, participate in in one of these actions? Um, Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, if um, if, for example, um, 
you have a company uh, that is developing and, and distributing a, a digital application where perhaps you're using uh, uh, various types of, of data, but also space data, um, for example, uh, images or, or positioning uh, services and so on. It's quite possible for, for that company to take part in Cassini matchmaking uh, and perhaps also in Cassini Business Accelerator if they are, you know, a startup that wants to to enter the growth phases and uh, and try to to double their their revenue um, year on year. Uh, so definitely yes, and um, and it's the same thing with the investments. Um, if if you are somewhere here, you know, in the domain of digital applications uh, and perhaps using space data. Uh, the uh, venture capital funds that we are targeting will likely have a, a varied investment strategy. So, if if that company is looking for a uh, for a venture capital round, it could very well be one of these uh, VC funds that that could be one of the uh, one of the investors in that round. So, so yeah, there are several interesting possibilities here, and I think we need to we need to join what we call you know the space bubble with all the other markets where we have various B2B and, uh, and B2C customers and, and also uh, public customers. Yeah. And and then um, uh, we might not have touched uh, on it, but uh, the Cassini Initiative is not just your directorate. Um, it's many different entities. Can you shed a bit of light on on who, uh, who else involved on the public level um, on creating this initiative? Yeah, so so as I said, we, we have a new director general called DG Duffy for, for the space industry. Uh, in addition, we have an agency in, in Prague called EUSPA that, that will be part of the of the implementation and they have uh, lots of uh, lots of knowledge and um, you know skills, uh, especially in implementing uh, the Galileo and EGNOS uh, positioning systems, uh, and they are now also uh, gathering a lot of expertise in, in, uh, in Copernicus. So in addition to that, we have ESA, the European Space Agency, which is not part of the EU, but, um, uh, but um, you know, an organization for, for, for its member states. Um, and what, what else? I mean, we, 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 we want to join forces with uh, as many organizations as we can. For example, you know, the ESA BICS, the uh, accelerators ar around Europe in, in ESA's network. Uh, are a, uh, an obvious partner mm -hmm. and uh, uh, so you know the, the better we can join forces uh, the more we can offer like a comprehensive support in Europe um, to uh, to create successful companies and we it, sometimes it's claimed that we have missed the the, the ICT revolution in yeah. Europe but it, it it's it's really not that obvious because uh, Europe has produced uh, at least 72 new u unicorn companies in 2021 only, which is mm -hmm. three times more than China. Uh, and since 1990, we have created more unicorns than China. Uh, obviously, comparing with the US is, is, is a bit more mm -hmm. difficult. But we have a lot of, you know, we have a lot, a lot of brilliant people who created successful companies in Europe. So. Well, while we're at it on, on, on working and collaborating together, um, I want to continue our audience. If there are questions, you can put it down in the chat and then we'll take it up. Um, Thomas, I see one, one big question in um, why should uh, more, um, more mature companies, corporates, actually uh, work together with the startups that are going to benefit from this uh, in, uh, initiative? Uh, for for instance, the, the world's challenging problems. Um, what what would be the in, the the added value of, of uh, working together with a startup um, as a non space yeah. company? Yeah, right. Yeah, that that's a very good question. I, I think you, you have a lot of experience at, at Ferhat in in, in uh, marrying um, you know uh, startup companies with with larger companies and, and to see what what synergies you can create from that. So I could I could provide a few examples uh, of what we what our objectives are and uh, we think that startup companies can can offer larger companies a lot of interesting things first of all they have a a, a fast and nimble way of, of innovating and creating products so it could be a way to create a new product development partnership it could also be a way for the uh, for the startup company to to find uh, distribution channels uh, offered by the larger company since the larger company often has many more um, established customer channels 
um, could could also be um, be a way to um, you know for the smaller companies to be part of a consortium and then delivering a more um, a more complete kind of um, uh, set of, of of services or, or products. Uh, so there there are several interesting ways to partner between between small and large companies, uh, and obviously there there are also the you know the opportunities to make investments in the smaller companies and perhaps uh, at one point uh, acquire them if it fits into the the strategy of the of the larger company. Yeah. I see there are many more questions coming in, but Thomas, um, you you're good for a few more questions, or um... okay, let's let's take one more question. Okay, um, the uh, while we're at, at, at collaborating on, on on getting startups together with with um, with a corporate, is what are some pitfalls for for the startups who are innovating within the new space? We don't want to digress too much, but um, what is a known pitfall for new space companies? Yeah, I mean, for, first of all, we have to recognize that that we have so many different types of companies here. Uh, I mentioned it as you know the space sector, but it's not that easy because you you have you have companies uh, making, for example, uh, payloads for satellites, uh, optical instruments, but also those making like satellite platforms. Uh, you have companies making digital applications of various kinds. Uh, there are so many different companies with different needs. So you you have to be able to analyze what those needs are and then try to uh, you, you need to try to see what can we do to benefit as many companies as possible knowing that we can't make it perfect for for everybody with the matchmaking obviously uh, smaller companies need to understand the requirements of the larger companies they, they already have a lot more processes and rules uh, due diligence procedures and, and so on so uh, entering a, a product uh, collaboration partnership is it isn't as easy as this startup sort of company might think in the beginning. Uh, but larger companies, obviously, they have you know they've been they've been around these things many many times before. So there is a reason why they're having invented these procedures. So it's about mm -hmm. understanding the uh, the roles and the uh, and the interests of of, of both parties um, to to be able to create a successful partnership. All right. Thank you very much, Thomas. Um, I'm I'm not going to keep you longer for your your personal matter. Um, so uh, thanks very much. It, it was uh, really nice uh, joining you, Peter. And I hope we, we can have a, an, an update a bit later. And if if um, uh, the companies that are on the call, are, you know, if you have questions or, or want to um, uh, to get in touch with us, uh, Peter has mm -hmm. the contact details. So you're you're very welcome. Uh, we can set yes. up a, like a, a bilateral call. Uh, if if necessary, also. So yeah, thanks. Maybe a lot for instance, for, like for joining the business growth accelerator, is that open to other companies as well? Yeah, I mean the, the Cassini Business Accelerator is meant for uh, both for space tech and for digital application companies. So uh, it could be a rather wide uh, target group here as well. Uh, okay. We just want to make sure that we we can help make the space data useful and commercialize it by creating more applications. Uh, and that's why we need to have like a wide target group and that target group needs to identify customers on, on, on a number of different uh, markets. So, so that's, that's why we are putting these, um, these actions into motion now. They will cost a little bit of money, but fortunately we've, we've, um, we've been able to secure a very good budget. So, Looking forward yeah. to this. Thank you very much, Thomas. And then uh, absolutely, it's a pleasure. Talk to you later. <laughs> and so, to our audience, um, if there are still questions, I will uh, pose those questions to Thomas uh, after he uh, after this, uh, this short webinar. And in the last five minutes, I actually want to um, showcase to uh, to each one of you um, what. Uh, What's the similarity between uh, building the innovation strategy that the European Commission has built um, and, and how it relates maybe to, to your strategy? Um, first and foremost, um, Verhaert, um, first and foremost, the strategy is comprehensive. Um, what Thomas not, not has shed light on is um, the European Commission has been doing a lot of aspects a lot of different broker projects 
where Verhart has, has supported entrepreneurs uh, through financing, through uh, one of the investment projects. Um, but the the gaps that he that there were noticed was that there was actually a bit of a fragmentation in the space industry um and the the similarities can be found in any large corporate uh, the it, it's the founding of a strategy the finding the finding of a strategy with its different aspects on how you're going to keep competitiveness within your industry within your uh, playing field um how do you find the gap and um, and make sure that you drill down on it. Um, the, the the first the gap was investment that that is clear uh, investment in in terms of private equity and they're really leveraging on, on new aspects that they um, they got new legislation through. So the, Europe, the he Thomas talked about the EIF the European Investment Fund. Um, there was actually a new kind of regulation created. Um, so you have innovation at the European Commission level, you have your in innovation within the, um, the financing, um, uh, well, financing, I wouldn't say industry, but for the European banking uh, scene, there was actually a new uh, way of blended finance where the European Commission is now taking direct equity in new scale-ups, uh, either through the European Innovation Council or directly through or the, the different prizes, for instance. Um, Verhart has been assisting uh, Thomas now for multiple, multiple years um, in, because he's been working at DigiDay, uh, which is the Director General for Defense and Space. Um, and he has been managing space entrepreneurship programs for, for uh, a longer time than just the Cassini Initiative. And so we uh, are now working together on the hackathons, uh, of which the hackathon weekend was two, two weeks ago. Uh, where the hackathons are aimed at bringing together students, bringing together professionals, uh, small companies um, to participate in a weekend um, and, and code over a challenge which is um, world, uh, which is a world challenge. For instance, um, yes, the last weekend was about the Arctic, uh, loss of life, loss of the, um, the, the loss of the ice but through climate change. What are some of the ways of addressing this with space? Um, are you going to measure the eyes? Who would be interested in that? Are you going to uh, look for currents? Maybe the shipping lanes uh, besides it uh, could be interesting to, to have a look at and provide more data on, on what the issue is and how to prevent the issue. Um, and uh, I think an inter interesting aspect uh, to, to look into as a corporate as well is we're faced with many many challenges um uh, challenges that surpass our companies challenges that or that are bigger than than just uh what you what we all do in in a normal way of working um but then uh finding working together on a quite abstract like what are we going to do for the arctic um might incite new ideas and then bringing together people from different startups uh, could provide new ideas on, on uh, maybe new aspects or new ways of looking at some of your processes and collaborating um, on this and, and how to integrate uh, the, the different ideas. Um, and for that, uh, we can definitely uh, work together and, and bring together these, these kind of different people across the network, um, across the different um, areas and then um, maybe see how you can assist with a, a new a new innovation program uh, on uh, addressing one of the world's biggest issues, which is, I think, climate change, uh, but there are many more. I see that brings us to time. Feel free to keep uh, sending in uh, questions in the chat, um, and then I'll be giving the uh, session through to my other colleagues uh, who are working on also designing the, the right solution for such a challenge. Thank you very much.